Part 3, Activities for Teaching Number Concepts at the Primary Grade Level. To modify a math activity for a blind child, um, in patterning, I use real objects. In kindergarten, they color patterns most of the time. And that's another point I want to make. Kindergarten and first grade children want to color, blind children, just like all the other kids in the school. And um, I want them to be the same as everyone else and not feel you're blind, you can't color. So I let them color. I put braille. I buy flat colored crayons. that um, They're called non-roll crayons. And on, there's a flat side on them. And I put braille label colors on them. So they learn their colors that way. But then they feel part of the class when everybody's yelling, can I have a yellow, can I have a yellow? They do that same thing too. They don't understand what yellow means. But oh, I'd like to use yellow too. So they'll grab the yellow and they know what yellow is. So in math, when the children in, um, are learning to pattern with colors, we're learning to pattern with objects. Um, in addition, we are learning um, something that I've used often now. A big problem in math was that the kids would go to feel their objects all over the place and count them and put them together and they just wipe them out. And that was a real problem of how to keep them contained. We used containers, but they were on top of each other. This way, um, I needed to find a way to keep it so they could feel them all in an order. So I put masking tape upside down, the sticky side up, and put that down and they had a field for all their objects to stick where they put them. <laughs> and then when they went back to feel and count again, they were there for them. So we use that for addition, um, subtraction, and the concepts of numbers. It's just that braille number, sticky number, has to be everywhere on every object they're doing. Um, we use envelopes with braille numbers on them. They read the envelope. They have to put that many objects in it. We put braille on. Uh, paper plates and they have to find the number and put that many clothespins on the paper plate. So um, just you have to just be creative in what you can find that you can stick braille on and the kids can manipulate. Other examples that we use, um, kids like to play school and teacher so every day they get a little brown envelope and I put the coin in the envelope for them to learn what their coins are. They have to open up the envelope and get the coin out so they just feel real important by opening an envelope. Um, the first time I gave it to a bunch of students, they didn't know, have any idea how to open an envelope. So you never think of all these things. So he just tore it open and had to get a new envelope, but that was a lesson. The next time was to teach them how to open it, a little brown envelope. Another thing, um, we play with uh, the large American Printing House has the game board. So we take, um, we'll roll the dice and they're learning dice. But um, one thing I found, blind children don't know how to roll the dice. So um, they don't see everybody else rolling it, rolling it. So that was one lesson, to put the dice in your hand and turn it and flip it over. They would throw it, they would, and then they couldn't find it either. So that was a lesson in itself. But to feel the dots on there and to understand what, what pattern that number is all the time is a lesson. Um, putting together, playing uh, Uno. We play a lot of Uno. Um, they have to read the color word and the number. And that, you don't have to buy that, you just braille that right on there. Um, a lot of things you can braille right on, you can just stick it in your brailler. Such as cards math cards that you buy at the store. You don't have to worry about the plastic paper. You can just put it right in the braille machine and braille right on top of it. And you can have the kids braille right on top of it and then play the game. The other day we played, um, um, and that was a letter game. We played go fish using uh, I words. So you could do that with any number cards. You can use a thematic approach when we read a story about, uh, or actually we did something with J's and it was jackets and they had to match the number of buttons onto the jacket. We have birthday cakes, they have to put candles on top of the birthday cake after they read the braille number. This is one of the ways we teach our number concepts right away. Uh, this is my one book. The child writes the number sign one and if hand over hand is needed, that's okay. We just practice every day. Um, and they have to find the object and they read this object to us. They put the one on every day or every page they put the one on. So when they go back and read it, they'll find, oh, this is one bow. And I say, okay, go find the braille. And then they'll find the braille and eventually 
they'll learn number one. One toothpick. The objects are glued on the one page. One spiral pipe cleaner. One spaghetti. One circle. One star. And what else? One feather. So whatever you have laying around. In my home, I have um, several children. So if I find junk on the floor, I just bring it to school and we use it in a book. We're doing uh, J Week. These are jelly beans. So today they did a jelly bean book. They had to write a color word and the different flavors and colors of the jelly beans. To teach independence, the beginning independence stage, um, I made this small graph and I use a thermal form machine to em um, emboss the graph. So it's raised lines so the child could feel it. The graph contains shapes. And um, for the ch child who can read, I um, read braille. This is a copy of it. I just went ahead and wrote the word um, in braille, circle, triangle, and made a line for them um, instead of making raised lines. But I take cups and I put those same shapes on them and they have to take the cup and I put items in it. So they have to count the item and then um, record it under the right recording. And that's very challenging for them. First of all, there's nine of them. And to find the same cup and to not to drop all the items in the cup um, to come up with the right answer. So that was very difficult at first, but then they started getting the hang of it. I also have Braille on it, the word square. And um, I tried to make them dark, but it ended up, these are wiki sticks and they make the shape on the cups also. The shaped wiki sticks are glued to the cup. Um, another game we play is I cover this up with tape. The teacher and, is holding a cardboard um, egg carton. We roll, we put a dice in there and um, we roll it and I have braille, um, I had put braille numbers in here and before we roll the dice um, we put an object in here and we shake it up and wherever the object is they would have to read the number. The braille numbers so are in each of the spaces that would hold an egg. Um, and this is a pretty heavy book, but this is for um, number concepts. Just take, um, if you go to a hardware store where they make keys, they have a big box of keys that they throw away. So we ask them for their keys, and they have to count the keys and braille the number on it. The keys are glued to and the this pages. this is for a higher level where they're counting more keys. And that's another book we've made. When I make these number books, I went through the dilemma of not knowing whether I should use literary numbers to teach right away because they're also beginning ABC Braille, um, or whether to teach Nemeth right away. And at first I was always very nervous and I didn't know which way was the right way, so I just made up my mind and I taught them literary numbers right away. Um, having taught 20 years now, after I knew the kids were really um, solid with their Braille skills, I just told them, okay, there's a new Braille system. It's called Nemeth Code. And whenever you do math, you have to use these numbers. Now take your number and drop it down. And they understood it. And it, even high-functioning, low-functioning kids, they caught it right away. And there was never a problem with it. Love the skill those. level where I decide that they're ready to um, drop their numbers down to Nemeth code, um, they have to be confident with the location of the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I can say, um, two through, make a two, five, six, they go to it like, it's in their brain, they know where it is. Um, they know um, probably first grade reading level. Um, they understand contractions. They understand how to, a lot of uh, the literary code I teach them, it's a drop letter, it's sitting on the floor. So they understand that. So when all those concepts are understood, um, first, second grade reading level, I just tell them, okay, drop it down. Probably more first grade level. Um, when I feel they're confident with their braille skills. I'd like to show you some of my wonderful collections of objects. Some are store-bought, some are um, just found here and there, but um, my pride and joy, this was a, obviously a math um, program from the school that they were getting rid of, so I used these for counters. These are the links that you can put together. These were at, um, they were getting rid of these at a store, uh, a tile store, so you can go and find these, and these are nice because they have both sides and they have ridges on one side, smooth on the other. Um, the leftover Halloween bin, there's all kinds of rings. And then all, for all the girlies in my class, we have all several different kinds of rings for counters. 
in the animal bin so they can sort, count, and learn how many legs on each animal. And these are the crazy bones from my personal home. My children come to school and they say, hey, Mom, I used to have a bin just like that full of crazy bones. And um, so we steal a lot of things from home. These are one of my personal favorite, a whole container full of frogs for them to count, sort, and discriminate all the different kinds and feels. These stretch. And those are some of the um, things you just can't buy anywhere, right? <laughs> but um, some of the things you can buy from APH um, is this 100 board. And you can do a lot of different things with it. It gives The hundreds you, um, board is 10 rows of 10 squares. Blue squares, red hearts, and they're all Velcroed on. Stars, and all the numbers to go with it, and green triangles. So you can do s shapes along with colors and numbers. And you can make them put all the numbers in a row. You can have them do quantities, tens, um, any area you're working on. The items attached to the board with Velcro. It also comes with the number chart in Braille. And the first time I had one of these, the child was counting and counting and got so upset because 18 was Brailled wrong. So I had to send it back. They found 18 was wrong. And the number chart is also 10 rows of 10 I boxes. I sent it back and they got a new one. Another thing for me, PH, that I use in math is the game board. It's called the game kit. Actually. The game board resembles a winding path. To the side, and it comes with this spinner. And the spinner has different sections, amounts of sections. This one has what, six? This one has seven. The spinner is circular. And you can put whatever numbers you need on there. You can put large print or just braille. And each child sits at one of these edges or you turn it towards them. And this is how it spins and which whatever section they read the number and that's how many they move. But the counters they give you, and since they can't, blind children can't see color, they're, um, we call it half circle head. You could be dome head, you could be triangle head, you could be square top head, pointy head, or triangle head. And they know which guy they want to be. And um, here's flat circle head. And here's their dice, and they roll it, and whatever number they get, they start on their way and they learn how to move and f one hand moves and the other hand watches where they're going. When somebody lands on top of them, they have to scream, ow, and uh, they get a kick out of that game. And so they go around and they, that's one way to teach them how to use the dice. This is another thermoform copy of coins and they have to find the braille on it. And I just use pennies and thermoform different amounts. So. Again, I would say it's a lot of time-consuming items, but um, after you get them, just they're easy ways to learn their numbers. Also, we use a lot of candy for counters. The teacher is holding a bag of jelly beans. And the kids make piles of any set of candy that they are asked to get. I talked earlier about brailing on top of any object or some objects. This is one of them, these cardboard flashcards, and I just put them right in the brailler, and you could see I just brailed right on top and put the problem on the actual card. The card also has a problem in and large print. And this was um, a lot of stuff we, uh, I use from Math Their Way program, and this is one of their ideas was to take lima beans and paint them, color them, and we made pumpkins, we made ghosts. And these are to be um, frogs. The frogs are two beans so glued together. these are fun counters also. And then you can put them down on a Halloween board or a, um, put the frogs in a pond. You can make a pond and how many, you could roll the dice and put that many frogs in the pond. That many pumpkins during Halloween, you could put that many pumpkins in the, on the fence. I take a whole language approach each week to the letter of the week and then I throw in math, science, and all my um, subjects around the letter. Um, and what we did today for math was we is jungle, we're talking about the jungle, and we made a jungle mix. And there's a braille version, let me leave them there. And each kid had to count out 16 animal crackers, 15 sticks, 14 fruit sacks, and 13 Cheerios. The ingredients are brailled and printed on paper. There are four bowls that hold the ingredients. So it's following directions, 
reading, their numbers, and counting.